All right, welcome back to KM6LYW Radio. Hey, today we are going to build an amateur radio APRS packet eye gate for $99, everything you need, and we're going to do it all in under 10 minutes, this time on KM6LYW Radio. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Yeah, we're still getting away with the bumper music. You know, 140 videos later, we're still getting away with the guitar bumper music. That was supposed to be a one-time gag, but you guys keep commenting about it, so uh, keep it up. All right, hey, eye gates, let's do it. So first of all, what is an APRS packet eye gate, and why do you want one? Well, if you're into amateur radio, you might already know that uh, we can always talk on voice, no problem, but on the, there's another data side to amateur radio, kind of like how your phone has a voice side and a data side. Well, the data side for most amateur radios is called APRS. That's Advanced Packet Reporting System Service. Um, and if you go out to APRS.fi, which is what we're looking at now, you can see all of the radio objects that are out there. This is the greater Northern California uh, area. And this sends uh, position reports, weather reports for weather stations. And uh, last but certainly uh, probably the most important is that actually you can do APRS text messaging with most APRS-enabled radios and DigiPies and TNCs. So what we are going to do today is make a use a Raspberry Pi, an RTL SDR receiver dongle. Uh, we're going to have this cool little screen on here for fun and a USB cable. And we're going to get all this stuff for $99. Now we're going to make an APRS packet radio receiver. Now what this does is picks up the packets flying through RF uh, over your house and forwards them onto the internet for further processing, you know, because there's a lot of internet enabled services behind packet radio, like you can get the weather, you can send SMS messages to real phones and back, all using APRS. But we're going to build an APRS receiver. In fact, you don't even need a ham radio license to build one of these because this is going to be a read only, listen only, and we're going to see the APRS packet radio information displayed on this little uh, screen right here. So if you're already familiar with the DigiPi project, which does all this and a whole lot more, this is kind of like a super light version. We're going to do all of this for $99 and we're going to install it all in under 10 minutes. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, so all of this bill of materials, all the stuff you need, I'm going to put down in the comments here, but I'm just going to go over them really briefly. Or we're going to need some sort of Raspberry Pi, ideally with these uh, those pin headers on here. That's $15. Cha-ching. I should have a little cha-ching noise. Um, we're also going to need one of these fun little screens. These are about $12. Um, it's just a TFT LCD. Uh, actually, they're $15 now. Inflation. And after that, we're going to need some sort of USB adapter cable so we can adapt from USB from the Pi to our radio. And certainly, and most importantly, we're going to need one of these software-defined radios. These are pretty cool. These are actually cheap. They used to be cheaper. $32, and this is a radio receiver. Um, and it will receive uh, 144.39 megahertz in the Americas, 144.39. Uh, eight, I think, in Europe. And uh, the Australian folks, you reminded me, uh, I want to say 170. I, I don't know. Anyways, you're going to need this. And then also, you're going to need some sort of antenna. Yes, we are including the antenna. I suggest getting one of these cheap roll-up antennas on eBay. They're $32. Um, it's made out of window line. I've got a few of these. In fact, buy two while you're there. It has the coax cable and everything. So this is everything you need. And if you were to add all this up, it'd be about 99 US dollars. So that's, so there's no excuse. Don't get cheap on me, guys. And if there's anything I learned on this channel is that ham radio operators, including myself, are cheap. So this is it. Uh, under 100 bucks, you've got an APRS eye gate. And the world can always use more eye gates. We're getting all that APRS traffic out of RF and onto the internet and back for that matter. All right, so let's put one of these together. So to start off, once you've got all of your hardware here, I want you to go out to raspberrypi.com slash software and install Raspberry Pi OS and flash it to an SD card, okay? That's what we've done here. I'm not gonna go into the details of that. All of the information is right here. Again, raspberrypi.com slash software. And then once it's flashed to your SD card and it's up on the network, uh, follow the rest of these instructions to get your APRS packet eye gate online. Let me make this a lot smaller. All right, so you've got your Raspberry Pi SD card image flashed, and we're going to get it up on the network. Hopefully you configured all that. We're going to plug this in. I'm going to do it while showing you guys this time. And the SD card's in there, and I'm going to plug apply power to our Raspberry Pi just like that. Now that guy is booting up. Um, we don't need to attach the screen yet. Um, eventually we are also going to hook up a USB dongle like this. And we are going to connect it to our radio, our RTL SDR device. And then we're going to connect that 
to our N9 tax antenna or whatever antenna you have. It could be any antenna, really. So we can get my antenna up here. It's stretched all the way to that uh, that wall behind me. <laughs> all right, we're plugging in the antenna. This is like major assembly right now. And I don't think we can plug in the monitor while it's on. At least uh, that would be ill-advised, I suspect. All right, so we are hooked up. We actually did, basically, this is the hardware build. We're done. Now we need to do some software configurations. Um, you need to get the Secure Shell or something, or it, I think it's called Putty for Windows. And what else do we got? Um, what else can we use to make sure you enable SSH when you build the Raspberry Pi? Make sure it's set up for Wi-Fi. And what else do you, it's a Juice SSH. That's what I was trying to think of for Android, Juice SSH. And it's basically, it gets you a command prompt on your Raspberry Pi. Now you could just plug in a monitor and keyboard and do this just as easily if you don't want to do the networking bit. So I'm going to go over here and enter the super secret password, which is always Raspberry, at least by default. And now we have a shell on here. Now there's a series of commands. I'm going to go through these pretty quick. They're all in the notes. You can certainly cut and paste them. I've got a little cheat sheet over here. So the first thing I want you to do is run sudo apt get update. And this is going to pull down all of the latest patches, the indexes from the online repositories. This just makes sure you have the latest versions of all the software. Um, and then we're going to install additional software on top of this guy. Again, this is over Wi-Fi. Hopefully, we've got that configured. All right, now it's time to install some our own software on this guy. And there's a few apt commands we can issue here. Actually, I need to run these as sudo. I'm going to go over here, say sudo apt git install direwolf. That's going to be our software TNC, our modem, so to speak. RTL SDR is going to be the driver for this really cheap receiver here we've got. And then some additional software to help drive this screen and a couple of other items. So apt git update, or apt, I'm sorry, apt git install direwolf, RTL SDR. It's asking me if I want to continue. I'm saying yep. And we're going to download this stuff. It's downloading actually rather quickly today. And once the Linux packages are installed, we're going to add some Python modules as well. So we're going to use pip, the Python installer. We're going to install uh, the CircuitPython stuff for the display, all right, and also some APRS libraries. So it's going to be sudo pip3 install and the rest of this. Again, all of this will be in the notes down below. And this is actual Python libraries. You, you don't really need to know this. It's just kind of for your own edification, I suppose. Um, but hopefully we'll get some aspiring Python developers to help out with, with this kind of stuff. So yeah, we're installing a lot of the circuit. This is the Adafruit libraries that actually help drive this display. So thumbs up to the Adafruit folks. And after that, we are going to install the APRS, Py, APRS Python libraries. Do it with pip3. You notice I'm using break system packages. Um, you know, for this is a Raspberry Pi, that's probably going to be okay. But there is no deb package for APRS lib, so we're uh, we're not using a virtual environment. We're just uh, landing that stuff right on top of our file system. But for such a small example like this, that is cool. Okay, one of the other cool things we got to do is to actually edit a config file. Um, I'm going to use Nano Editor. Uh, because I think that's one of the more easier ones. And I want you to use your arrow keys and come down to where it says DT param spy equals on and remove backspace over that little hash sign because uh, we want to make sure that this is active, that that line exists. And I press Control X, say Y to save the buffer, and then hit Enter. All right, we did that. And at this point, we're going to need to reboot. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to add that display while I'm at it. So I'm going to do sudo shutdown minus H0. We have to do a reboot so that the SPI line that we just edited uh, goes into effect. So I'm going to carefully install this monitor now. I'm actually going to remove power just, <laughs> just to save a static discharge, I guess. I don't know. I'm going to remove power. And then I'm going to put this monitor on here like this. Make sure the pins are lined up on the headers. And then we're going to apply power again. All right, so now we've got our hardwares all assembled. And once again, we are going to SSH out to the Raspberry Pi. Again, you could do this on the console or via Juice or Putty. All right, get our command prompt back. Still booting up a little bit. All right, so we need to create a direwolf.conf file. So I'm going to do nano direwolf.conf. And this is just in the Raspberry Pi user's home directory. And I'm going to paste just a handful of lines into this. 
Um, really simple stuff. Uh, my call is no call. I'm just pretending I'm not an amateur radio operator. But if you're an amateur radio operator, put your call sign where it says no call. And then also put your APRS uh, password, passcode, pass number uh, right there. And I'm going to hit control X, uh, say Y, and then return. And now we have direwolf.conf. We can cat it out if we want to. So there it is, now that we're, we're configured. So the next thing I want you to do is to do a git clone of DireWatch. This is the software that actually drives this little display that we put on there. It says cloning to DireWatch. Now I'm gonna do CD DireWatch. And then I'm gonna run the big commands. We're here, this is like the grand finale, you guys. I'm gonna run this big, long, ugly command, which is gonna run the start the software for this uh, RTL SDR dongle, and it's also going to fire up the modem inside the Pi, gets all the frequencies and bit rates right. It's also gonna output to a log file, okay? And then uh, we're gonna read that log file with our monitor in a, in a fancy way. So, and I'm gonna put an ampersand on the back there um, so it runs in the background. Now at this point, I'm going to run the dire watch command. This is where it gets exciting. So the eye gate's running. And we're going to run direwatch.py, and we're going to point it to the log and give it a clever title. And we're going to see that little uh, screen light up here. See where it says APRS. And now we are in. We have an APRS eye gate. It's going. Now we're waiting for a packet to come in here. I, hopefully that antenna is switched over. <laughs> All right, packets are rolling in. We can see it here. You know, it's, it's just hard to... to to get this to zoom right. So we can actually see uh, stations coming in over RF through that uh, RTL SDR dongle. This is a weather packet, shows the weather. Uh, this is a beacon from somebody, um, KE6WJY. Thank you for being an example here. And again, this isn't gonna transmit or digipede or anything like that. This is simply going to receive packets display them on the display here, and then forward them on to the APRS information service, APRS.fi, um, so to basically complete that cycle, complete that loop, and get your APRS packet data, radio to, data to the internet. Hey, you can ignore all of these error messages. This is just has to do with the GPIO pins and stuff for dire watches just complaining there. So yeah, don't, don't sweat that stuff. So we did it. We, for $99, we built an APRS radio packet eye gate and we did it in under 10 minutes, I think. So I, there's no excuse to not build an APRS packet radio eye gate. I think they're pretty cool and the world can always use more eye gates. Maybe not so much digipeters. You usually wanna coordinate those if you're gonna be transmitting. But you know, you, once, you, once you get the hang of this, you could replace this SDR radio and uh, with the real actual uh, Yesu radio. In fact, you could do this on HF as well. So APRS packet eye gate. We just built one. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Um, what I wanted to do is thank the patrons. Let me see if I can get you guys up here. So patrons, you guys are responsible for all of this. You make this happen. Uh, you make these videos uh, free of adverts. Um, I got really got to thank you guys. Um, it, it's actually getting into the thousands now. So everything... Um, you contribute actually gets shoved back into the channel or maybe takes the XY out, XYL out for a dinner um, so she's a little more understanding when I sit in here and listen to static all day. Right, that, that, that's how that's described. So <laughs> you guys can do this now. Hey, patrons uh, not only support the channel and make this ad free, but they also get access to the DigiPi SD card image, um, which is a kind of like one of these only on steroids. It's a full-blown... Uh, wireless data transceiver and it gives you access to every data mode we talk about on this channel all you do is plug it into your radio and you can access everything on your digipi via your your phone or your tablet or basically any web browser that's on the network it works great and some it's in the air so digipi.org if you want to check that out this is the digipi in action um, it's kind of like a super duper version of what we just built not only does it do APRS I gate but it also does APRS digipeter um, it does FT8 JS8 call Linux node services. You could run a bulletin board and it's all done with your phone or some sort of web browser. So the DigiPi goes to patrons of the channel. Patrons, thank you very much. So let me know how your APRS iGate builds go. Um, this can be done in 10 minutes for $99. Uh, it's just a fun project. In fact, this is really what got me hooked on data modes to begin with. So this, uh, this, <laughs> this little project actually means a lot to me. All right, guys. Hey, my name is Craig, amateur radio call sign KM6LYW. I'm in California, and I am clear. <laughs>